Good morning, my little nerds. I am Dr. Shereen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist based here in New York City. Welcome to our YouTube channel where every Saturday morning we do a pillow talk together. Um, so this Saturday we're going to be covering best summer skin tips and hacks. I have eight really good ones for you, but before we jump in, a small PSA. Um, over the past few weeks, somebody has been acting like me, uh, DMing you guys or messaging below in the comment section that um, you have won a prize. I just want you to know that this is somebody that it, we are currently tracking down um, and we are hopefully going to stop. If anybody gets a comment from somebody who looks like me saying you won a prize, it is not me. Um, there is no raffle or giveaway going on at this moment. So please make sure to report the comments even on the previous videos if you have been targeted. So report that user as YouTube is currently working on it. And with that being said, let's dive in. Number one, and starting honestly from head to toe, because why not take care of your whole body during this hot weather, is, and it's an obvious one, use sunscreen every day. SPF is not a negotiable. It is a non-negotiable. And I have three really good tips about the SPF and then I'm gonna switch it up, I promise. But number one, not because you are super fair or because you are very dark, sunscreen applies differently to you. Every single human being needs to apply sunscreen regardless of their skin tone, and they need to apply the right amount. Usually I would say two full fingerfuls of sunscreen for your face, and the third one if you're gonna go down to your neck and on top of your chest. Obviously, don't forget the tops of your ears. This part is very much always affected by the sun where skin cancer appears. And if you wear your hair up or if you have short hair, the back of your neck, all right? Those are super important. If you're thinking about the sun and you want to understand why, they emit UV rays. UVA is the aging type of rays. UVB is the one that causes the burns. Both do contribute to the formation of skin cancer. So definitely make sure that you are getting a broad spectrum sunscreen that covers for both UVA and UVB. Make sure that you're thinking about the occasion and what you're doing and the type of sunscreen you're using for that occasion. So for example, I'm in the city, I'm running around, I want to reapply because reapplication is important if you are out and about. If you're sitting indoors all day, far away from windows, you're probably safe. But if you are somebody who's out and about, you should reapply. So what do I take? I take an SPF powder. Are these as good as regular sunscreen? Absolutely not. They're not. But something is better than nothing. And so I put a little bit of powder and when I'm on the go and it's a very easy to reapply, it doesn't mess up your makeup. If, for example, I am playing tennis, which I wish I did, but I don't. I wish I were more sporty, but unfortunately I'm not. Um, but if I were in my fantasy world, I would take a spray sunscreen. Now a spray, is it better than lotion? No, it's not. You have to be careful with the spray. You can't spray it on your face necessarily. So I would be spraying it fully in my hand, get a large amount and then put it on my face. And you're like, what's the point of a spray then? For the body. I really apply a lot on my lower legs. It allows me to get my back, my arms, etc. But make sure to apply a liberal amount, not just a, not like that. I'm talking about like a, some, I don't want to waste and I don't want to get the couch dirty or my clothes. I'm going to work, but a liberal amount and then really rub it into your skin. You can't just let it sit on your skin and just think it does the job for you. God, this one smells like you're on vacation. I have a whole SPF video. I'm going to link it below with some of my favorite sunscreens. My current favorite one that I'm actually obsessed with is the Beauty of Joshan. It's a uh, K-Beauty sunscreen. It is beautiful. Sure. Two in my eight skin hacks for summer. Make it chic. We are nerds and we are proud. So let us make it chic. My husband still to this day hates when I walk around with this. I honestly could give a rat's tushy tush because this is the best thing. First of all, it's a visor. It really does not mess up any hairstyle or flatten your hair if you do not want it to. It comes all the way down. If I'm in the garden um, and I just kind of want to get appropriate sun protection, it is very wide brimmed. It protects my face, my neck, and the top of my chest. If there's a lot of sun and I need it to come down a little bit more, I do this. So it's just so versatile. And the way UV visor actually works, it's interesting. This guy right here bounces off the UV rays. It's not just blocking it like a hat would, it's actually bouncing it off. And it is excellent. There are several brands on the market. The ones I like are by Noli Yoga. I will say the one by Noli Yoga is a little bit tight 
Um, Bluestone also has a really nice one. I think it approximately retails for 70 bucks. And you can find some on Amazon, just make sure that you're not buying something that just has a plastic shield, but something that is actually blocking off UV rays. Number three, UV protective clothing. And UV protective clothing is not a scam. This usually has fabric made up with UPF, and UPF works by absorbing as well as blocking UV radiation. So it's not like a normal shirt. You have to be careful how many times you wash it. It does kind of expire over time, but UV protective clothing is excellent as well. And a fun little hack that I have, actually a patient got me these um, last week in my practice, are UV protective gloves. Um, this one is particularly important because when you're driving, if you're somebody who drives a lot, um, your hands are constantly exposed to the sun through your dashboard. Um, this is actually a really nice one to put on your hands. I look like driving Miss Daisy. Um, there are way cooler ones. I like these ones, but there are way cooler ones. There are some metallic ones that I've seen online as well. You can look like Michael Jackson from the 80s if you want. Um, but if you're driving, if you're playing golf, if you're gardening a lot and you're really getting a lot of sun on your hands, this is a really nice um, hack for you guys for summer. I also get rash guards, which are shirts made up of UPF. Um, I have them in literally every color. So when I go to the beach, I jump in my white one into the water. I come out, I hate wearing a wet t-shirt. So I take off the white one, I put on another dry white one and we're done. And no, it's not a white, t white wet t-shirt contest. It's not that. I have my bathing suit underneath. Number four, in summer, in very hot and humid climates, especially if you have oily skin, you can skip your morning moisturizer. I am giving you permission to skip your morning moisturizer. I'm not saying skip it all together. There was somebody on TikTok who was saying skip the moisturizer at night. Absolutely not. I think you should moisturize at night to rebalance your skin. But in the morning, given that you're gonna live your day and it's hot, you're probably gonna sweat on top of getting oilier. And so sometimes a moisturizer can be overbearing on your skin and overclog your pores. And so instead, I just usually wash with water, use a vitamin C serum or something with vitamin C, and then I put a double moisturizer. Um, this one, for example, is a double repair face moisturizer. It has SPF 30, but it also has ceramides that make it a much richer base. So this is going to be enough for the morning in the hot summer months. And I'm talking about basic moisturizers, moisturizers that are basically just there to replenish hydration. I'm not talking about things with actives. If you have an issue, obviously treat your issue first. Number five. Hydration then, how do we maintain hydration if you're telling us to skip moisturizing? So this is where face mists are helpful. Um, and again, it's very much based on the environment. If it's a very humid environment, then the face mists like the Aven, like this Evian, like the Vichy of Thermal Water Springs are okay. It's a light spritz, easy to use. If it's humid outside, again, I'm not so concerned that this one's gonna dry you out because it's humid. If it were super dry, like in winter when the heaters are blasting, or um, if you live in a very dry climate, sorry, I'm like a mess this morning. If you live in a very dry climate, then I am worried that just spraying water on your face might dry you out a little bit. So instead, I would recommend my glycerin mist. And that one is usually made up of glycerin. You can use distilled water. You can add rose water if you feel like it helps you or skip it if you don't. I have a whole video for it as well. Um, but the glycerin mist is more for dry climates or winter climates. The thermal waters, you could technically use and be totally fine over a hot, humid summer. Number six. To stay, I should take this off because I am going to work. Um, do you see? This is the Noli Yoga one. It does feel a tiny bit tighter and I have loosened it. So if you have a big head like myself, um, you might be a little bit annoyed at how tight this is. Um, number six, I will say to stay extra cool. And this is my favorite hack for melasma. I have this neck fan. This is not a headset. And the way this one works, you put it on your neck and you go. And they have several settings so I can actually get more air or not. So light fan, medium fan, heavy fan. But this is a great one. I love this particular device, especially for people with melasma because melasma is not just triggered by UV and sun. If anybody has melasma out there, you know that heat alone can trigger it. So to try to keep yourself nice and cool throughout the summer is a great addition. Plus, 
people all think they're headphones, so you're not looking completely weird between your UPF gloves and your visor and this. People literally think you're walking around with headphones. At the lowest setting, you can hardly hear it. But if it's a really hot day and you're working outside, blast it up and just go all the way. Um, it's white noise. It will literally mute the rest of the noise around you. But I love this guy. How much did I buy this for? This one was 28 bucks on Amazon. I'm gonna link everything below. Number seven, we've talked about your face with sunscreen, your visors, your UPF clothing with your hands, your whole cooling mechanism. Let's talk about this area the décolletage, which often gets overlooked. In summer especially, we are wearing lower cut t-shirts, v-necks, shirts, etc. So this part is gonna be much more present. Present, I don't know why I said it that way. Um, so what can you do to help yourself to minimize some of these lines that form overnight, especially when you're, if you're a side sleeper? You can put a silicone gel sheet there. And silicone gel sheets are classically used for scars to keep them flat post-surgically so that they don't become keelers or hypertrophic but you can also use them on your chest, especially between your breasts, um, to help minimize A, the friction of the fold, but B, to lock in moisture and to make sure your skin is absorbing moisture from underneath, um, drawing it from below the surface up and keeping it plump. So small hack, there are brands that sell silicone gel sheet patches for this area. I've tried them, they're huge, they were very uncomfortable, but if you just have a little something that you wanna target, very easy, very non-expensive. This is 15 bucks from Walmart. You can put it in between your breasts and say adieu to the sleep. Talk about the décolletage. So and last, we've covered your face, we've covered your neck, we've covered your chest, we've covered the cooling, we've covered the clothing. Let's talk about our feet. In the summer, we are wearing different types of shoes. We're not just wearing socks and shoes or ballerina flats. We might be wearing sandals, which by the way, I do not know if I would recommend wearing flat sandals in New York City with all the city juice going around, but you do you. Um, and our feet are taking a hit given all the different types of shoes that we are wearing. And so in the summer, especially, I love to take an exfoliating acid pad. And this is a video that I did explaining. After I use it on my face, I will use it on my feet because why not? I would definitely say do not use salicylic acid because your feet are not oily areas in general. So pick things with glycolic acid instead. Once I've exfoliated, I will put a urea-based lotion, as you can see over here, especially between the nooks and crannies and at the heel of my foot to help break up that extra keratin. And then I will seal it in with a Aquaphor ointment spray because it's more lightweight than thick Vaseline. And if I have um, 10, 15 minutes, I will wrap it with plastic wrap and a sock and allow my feet to fully, fully absorb all of that goodness. And once I take those babies off, it is like baby's feet. This is basically a do-it-yourself foot mask. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this hack and your feet will thank, everyone will thank your feet and me, I think, for this particular hack because Lord knows I don't have an hour and a half to spend at getting pedicures. I don't know how often. All right, so those are my top eight summer skin hacks. I hope they were helpful. I hope you guys have a beautiful long weekend wherever you guys are. If you do have a long weekend, if not, good luck on Monday at work. I'm Dr. Shireen Idris and I will catch you guys next week. And don't forget to report the spammer below. All right, take care.